You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the town of Brantford. Excuse me. We're starting the meeting right now. It's going to be lovely to meet you in a minute. I want to welcome everybody tonight to the Elderly Commission meeting. My name is Lori Rockwell, the chair. I'm going to have the commissioners introduce themselves, starting with Dana. Dana Murphy. Patty Torrey, Mary Hahn, Pat Brownell, Jean Rico, Susan Barnes, Nancy Cohen, Dagmar Ridgway, Doreen Denhart Clerk. So, and welcome everybody. And again, for the citizens that are here tonight, welcome. And again, if you do come up to speak, we want you to come up to the desk so you'll speak into the microphone and please introduce yourself. Okay? So, welcome. So, did everybody get a chance to remove to review the minutes from the September 13th meeting? And again, that was the last time that we actually formally met because yeah, we didn't have our meeting in November. Yeah. So did everybody get a chance to review them? Any corrections, additions, deletions? Can we approve them as written? Make a motion to approve, approve the minutes as written. Make a motion to approve. Uh, make a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. So approved. So we also have our meeting schedule for 2019. So again, that's the next handout that you have. Again, we approve that, so we have tonight's meeting. The next meeting will be May 9th, then September 12th, and then November 14th. And certainly if there's any pressing issues that come up, we can certainly call a special meeting so everybody's aware, okay? okay. So we'll have those approved. So, Dagmar, do you wanna do the annual report? I can do the annual report. It's in your packet um, on the back of one of the financials. Um, this we had to get to the town clerk in December. And it's just really a summary of everything that happened in the last fiscal year. I think it was emailed to all of you. Yes. Um, yeah. Any questions on it? And it will be printed eventually. It takes them a while to get them printed. And it's also posted online. Questions on it? No? I think the important thing, um, one of the most important things are the volunteers at the center. And when we do these reports every year, we say how many hours they do, driving, et cetera. But um, at our uh, celebration in May of Older Americans Month, we really honored our volunteer instructors. But it's also a greater group of people that volunteer and make the center work. So when you look at the, you know, how many activities and classes and meals and things that went on. That really is made possible a lot, not only by the team of people we have, but also the volunteers, and also particularly in the medical car. Over, uh, um, over a full-time position was donated by the 18 people, and so we're very grateful for all of that, and also the people who donate to the center. Those are the key things. Great, thank you. Any questions on the annual report? No. <laughs> this, yeah, we do zip line too. Um, you want me to go on? Sure, to my reports? please. Uh, a couple things on staffing. Uh, since we last met, Gina um, Moore, who was our transportation coordinator, lucky her got a job, and her husband got a job in Florida. They relocated to Florida and they're very happy there so then we went on a search to try and find a new transportation coordinator and the end of december we welcomed alicia panayotakis to our team she's been a wonderful addition and it's been a pretty smooth transition um, she comes from background of working in school transportation services particularly disabled and handicapped children and um, she's got a lot of compassion, a lot of heart, and a lot of knowledge. She knows buses, she knows the systems, and people have responded well to her, and I'm very grateful to have her fill those big shoes of Gina's, but she's doing a nice job of it. And it's a lot to learn, to learn the people, to learn the schedules, the drivers, and all that, and uh, she stepped up and played very nicely, so we're glad to have her on our team. And, Gina's doing well in Florida for anybody who's wondering and has a new grandchild on the way. So for those at home who miss her, um, 
you could do that. One thing that uh, Alicia and I spoke about today regarding the transportation, and for anyone that comes to the center, we're updating our emergency contact numbers. And it, particularly if you're using any of our transportation, it's really imperative that we have an emergency contact with an active phone number on it. We've run into situations where we haven't been able to get a hold of someone. So if you call the center or stop in to pay for something, the team member that's helping you is likely to say, hey, let me just update your emergency contact information. Hopefully we never have to use it, but if we do, we have it to pass along. So. Um, for anyone. If we ask you, we're not trying to be nosy, we're just trying to help you if there were to be an emergency. Um, one of the things, too, um, when I go through the finances, why don't we go through the financial report, as long as we have that. Um, we're right on target with everything that um, our budgets our travel expense usually gets heavier in the spring when we start to go to all our conferences, but we're right on target with everything that we have. There's no accounts that I'm really worried about. Our repair and maintenance is getting a little bit up there. We've had some repairs on some of our older buses, but I'm working with Alicia now. We have an appointment to go um, look at some vehicles and begin to spec out two new buses that we hope to get before the end of the fiscal year. Stay on track with that. And then our buses go into the town fleet, just like our cars do, so other departments can use them. Um, so we're, we're doing okay, and next year that should go down, hopefully a little bit, with the delivery of two new vehicles. Um, let's see. We're doing well. If you look at our endowment, our interest is about double what it was last year at this time, which makes Nancy very happy, because generally they use the interest that we earn from that account for programming. So um, that helps offset some of our expenses for special programs that we do. If you look at the medical transportation, we're really healthy in that. That account now has over $62,000, and we pay for all the gas and the maintenance on the vehicles. Obviously, we get the volunteer drivers. So that is very healthy right now. Um, and having three relatively new cars, only a couple of years old, our maintenance and repair is very low on that. So um, safety is always in any of our transportation services. Safety is our number one thing. And if there's anyone at home that's not aware of our medical transportation, that's for people of all ages, 21 and over, to medical appointments. We do a safety evaluation before we let you on any vehicle to make sure you can get from your home in and out of the vehicle unassisted because the drivers aren't allowed to provide hands-on assistance for the safety of everyone. So if you're interested in that, you can give Alicia a call at 203-315-0681 um, and she can do an evaluation. Whether you're taking the bus or medical transportation, you have to have an eval done. Um, any questions on the monthly financial report? No. no. Then I will flip it over and we'll go into our stats. And I really want to focus a little bit on the donations that we've received because there are several organizations that have really helped us a whole lot. And one is the Homemaker Thrift Shop. I know a lot of people support it there. To date, they've given us over uh, about $5,000 this year. Oh, that's right. yeah, in, 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 in this fiscal year, oh, okay. in the current since July. So that's a good amount of money, and it does go toward our medical transportation. So we're very grateful to them and the people that support the Homemaker Thrift Shop for the support they give us there. Um, you'll also see that in October there was $1,950. That came from the Aging Mastery Program. They partnered with Anthem. And so for each person we had enrolled, we got a reimbursement from them for all the time and the energy that goes into putting that eight-week, ten-class program together, which we'll be offering another series starting March 20th? No, April 9th. April 9th through May 28th is graduation. So if you're interested in that, it's free to anyone who's an Anthem participant, and they'll do a round of marking out to their participants in anyone really in the area that's aging, and we all are. It's really targeted people 50 and over. If you haven't taken it, Patty, you've taken it. I have taken it. I've talked about it before, but I'm mentioning it again. You want to say something about it? No, I really enjoyed it, and I was informed on things I thought I knew, and 
I suggest that if you get the chance that you do take it. Yeah. It's an enjoyable eight weeks. Pat, Pat, did you take it as well? I did. Yes. And what are your thoughts? The first about time it? it was offered, I took it. And I thought it was well worthwhile, even though I had been exposed to many of the things. Yeah. It was an excellent refresher course. And, uh, yeah, and we, we limit it because not, when, you, when you turn 50 and over and you begin to age, as we think more rapidly, everybody ages at the same rate, there's so much stuff you don't know. Right. And I think we think we know it, but we pull in professionals, whether it's colleagues within the town or medical professionals or financial people, and it's through the uh, National Council on Aging. It is now an evidence-based program that people who take this live longer and happier and healthier mm -hmm. lives. And that's our goal. We want to educate as many people. We limit it, and what happens in the class stays in the class. <laughs> right, ladies? That's right. So, um, and Anthem does market it regionally, so there were people in our last class that were from other community towns, but it really brought another dimension to the class to have people you may not know. And so if you're interested, you can call Nancy or see any staff member to sign up for that. Um, and that again starts April 9th. April 9th. Thank you. That's why you, you book those things. Um, we also, in our fundraising through our craft fair, our election day craft fair, we made at least $1,500, which is phenomenal, and all that money goes back in to support those um, creative arts programs that we offer. Um, and it, the, the most heartwarming thing is people reacting to the things that people have made. Nancy, you want to speak to that at all? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, the ladies and some of the gentlemen will um, sell their wares, and it's just fun to watch the public say, Wow, this was handmade, and you know they just take pride, and you know it's fun. It's a great social time. So anyone who likes to knit and crochet, come on down Thursdays at ten in the morning. We're there. <laughs> we do jewelry making. We do yeah. all kinds of stuff. Um, I do a lot of my Christmas shopping at that fair, yeah. actually. Yeah. So I'm happy to do that. We also had a $500 donation in January from Martin Hallier. Um, who's also one of our drivers in medical and in our bus, and he supports our programs and believes in what we do. We're grateful for individuals that do make those kinds of donations. It really helps us expand what we do and not and keep our fees low. So we're grateful to everyone in this last quarter that donated. And if anyone's interested in gifting anything to us, just give me a call. I'd be happy to give you the information. Um, the next thing on my agenda is the budget for next year. You have a copy of that there. I think I do too. That's my copy. I can steal that from you. Yeah, that's mine. mine. I'm stealing <laughs> yours, but sorry about that. Um, pretty much, I kept the budget flat for our first selectmen. Uh, the raises that staff are going to receive are contractual. So we really, that's because we are uh, in unions, it's based on the unions. The part timers are getting a two percent raise, which is really good because if you're going to ask someone to keep come teach a class once a week, they need some incentive to keep with it. Nancy and I were talking yesterday how blessed we are with the team of professionals that we have. They're all certified. They really relate well to their students, and I get nothing but positive feedback on our instructors, and they've been with us a long time. Kim Healy, our swimming instructor, has been there over 30 years. And every year she says, I'm getting certified again. And, and it's just it's from the relationships they establish with people, whether it's in the fitness programs, in the art classes, um, in the craft classes, whatever it might be. Um, so we do have that. Um, there is a crude payroll expense, and that's because we have two extra payrolls in this fiscal, two extra paydays in this fiscal year. And that comes from finance. Um, under employment testing, that went up a little bit because we have a team of CDL drivers, and they have to get tested. And when you reach a certain age or have a certain uh, condition, you have to get uh, your physical twice a year instead of once a year. So some of our drivers bumped up there. And also, uh, the town recently changed the vendor that they use for physicals. And come July, we will switch to them because they're local at um, Ocknell. They're local. So right now, we have to send them to the Yale clan that's in Hamden. So it's just better for everyone all around. It's a little more expensive, but it's not. It's negligible. So that went up a little bit. 
Um, I left the R and M uh, at the same rate. If we take delivery in two buses, then we should be well within that, and I won't have to sweat it. Um, kept printing the same, furniture the same, staff travel and staff development is all the same. So I didn't increase anything um, on the operating side other than the physicals. And as soon as you give me the okay on this, I will present it to our first selectman for review in finance and HR. So do we need a vote? Um, yeah, I thought I have a question. Uh, but yeah. No, I make a motion that we accept this. I reviewed it and at home, and I can see where you're coming from. Thank you. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay, That's Jamie, great. Jim, and Margaret, we're coming. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is the new build. I had asked Jamie to come tonight. He wasn't able to come. He had another okay. commitment. But I just want to keep you up to date on what's going on because it's probably the most asked question that right. we as a staff get. And I took um, a couple of team members. We went over and did a walkthrough today so they could see the progress. And a lot of what you see, the new move-in date's May 17th subject to change mm -hmm. because a lot of the work they've done is still infrastructure. The, you can't see it, but on the inside, you know, there was pipes that had to be replaced. There were, you know, all the HVAC is pretty much in, the roof is done, the electrical's in, the framing for the walls is in, but there was a whole lot of work when you have a 50-year-old building things that had to come out and go back in. But I think everyone will be very pleased and we're excited about the new space um, that we're going to have and that it's really going to happen in the next, I would say, three to five months. I'm really excited about it. And, you know, like anything, it's give and take. Is it everything we could want? No, because that's too expensive. But we really have a, a building that I think we'll be proud of and will serve the community for many, many years to come and it's got the historical it's where we started in that building actually we had one little closet in another little room way back when I can remember when I was first hired over 40 years ago I'd have to go over there we had just moved to Canoe Brook and I'd have to go over to the community house to use a Kostetner copy machine and got ink all over and did all that so we've had a nice relationship with that building and we're looking forward to going back there so um, and we'll maintain our identity as Canoe Brook and all the things you've come to know and love about Canoe Brook. We'll just move over into nice new quarters that will feel fresh okay. and be the, how it should be. Um, I also have um, any questions about what's going on there? And I know people are anxious to have Jamie come to the center to speak to them, and he will as soon as he can. Um, we're waiting for the architect to get some final things. and. Um, he will come talk to you, hopefully, very soon. Um, any questions from the commission? Yeah. Nope. No. Okay. Jack Moore, why is the uh, name Canoe Brook? It's a historical oh, name because the town in the fourth ward where we are, there was actually a brook that ran through, and the Indians had named it Canoe Brook. So we kept that name, and uh, we kind of like it. Though. Kind of that. What? <laughs> they could do they they, 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 I don't know what they did on like, it, but it gets located? back. Was it like where the building is? I'm not know? sure, but I know that John Sliney, who hired me and was my mentor years ago, his family lived across the street and they used to have an outhouse on the property. And, you know, he told me a lot of good stories in the horse barn that was next door. And, <laughs> yeah, not that anyone here would know anything about horses. No. Um, but yeah, and, and I think it's important to maintain like the rooms will still have a Monoese and a Tatoka and a Sliney room. And I think it's important as we history. relocate to maintain mm -hmm. our identity and our history. Because I want people to say, like the Matthew H. Brady Library, who was Matthew H. Brady? Mm -hmm. He was another mentor and a director for 32 years of Canoe Brook and brought it to where it is. So um, I think it's really important to maintain those names. And originally when we were renovating where we are now in the 80s. Um, we came up with naming it after the Indian tribes. That's where Waverly and Tatoka and uh, not Slide. Slide, Waverly, Tatoka and Monoese were all Indian tribes that were in this community and had a lot to do with the settling of Granford. So 
Um, that's that's it. Any that's other questions on the um, building? Anything like that? Okay. Um, another thing that I want to talk about that I think is important to get out to the community, and I've been working with Channel 8, we're going to be doing a piece on it, is in the last several weeks there's been a real jump in people contacting us about scams, phone scams that are coming on. And there's two really big ones. The one that's been very timely is, as many of you know, this past year Medicare reissued Medicare cards not using your social security number, but a randomly generated number. Now those cards only went out to people who remained in traditional Medicare, not people who switched to an HMO or a Medicare Advantage plan. You got a card from Anthem or Aetna or whoever it's from if you have Medicare Advantage. So the scammers are very, very sophisticated. They can be very convincing, and they call you on the phone and say, you know, I know you have Medicare, and you didn't get your new card because you're not entitled to a federal Medicare card because another company's managing your benefits. And we need your number to make sure you get a card. And this happened. And they're very convincing, and they're very persistent, and they're very well coached. And I think it's really important. I want to get the word out to people. Don't answer those calls. And it's very sophisticated because they're all computer managed. And then you get a live person, and the live person, you're like, oh my God, this person knows my name. They know where I live. I got to give them my number so I get my Medicare card. Don't do it. Hang up the phone. Even better yet, don't pick it up. Medicare and Social Security will never call you on the phone unless you have generated the call and said, call me back at a particular time. They don't just call you randomly, they don't ask, but someone who came in to, to report this had happened um, was half asleep and picked up a phone, you know, didn't have their TV on, didn't see their caller ID. And often the caller ID will say Social Security Administration, because you can put whatever you want on your caller ID to identify who you are. So don't answer the call. Anybody worth their weight is going to leave you a number. Don't call the number they leave you. Call us at the senior center and say, so-and-so called me. Is this valid? Okay, I want you to do that. We're all aware of the schemes. The other one that happened to a gentleman on Friday, he came in to see us, he's a younger senior, and there's one about back braces. All of us as we age, our backs tend to hurt a little bit more, yeah. and it's not uncommon. Oh, we know you're taking medication for pain for your back, yeah, and you can that. get one of these braces. Are you so-and-so? They know your name. You say yes. As soon as you say yes on that, they have your voice saying yes, and they bill out to Medicare. They send you useless, useless things you don't need. They don't have you know, a doctor's script for it, which they're supposed to. They fabricate it. And it's a huge, huge problem. The one on the people to report it to is obviously you can call us at the Senior Center. Federal Trade Commission, here's some really interesting numbers. In 2017, they had about 1,500 reports. And it was, you know, like $50,000 people have lost. 2018, because of the new Medicare card screen, yeah. uh, scheme, they had over 35,000 reports. That's only people that reported it into the Federal Trade Commission. And over, I think it was $10 million that people were scammed out of. So just a word of caution. Um, don't even answer those phones from those calls because they are very convincing. And once they call you and you talk to a person, you get put on a callback list. It's that sophisticated. So they'll call you back the next day. Oh, we spoke to you yesterday. And then you get really nervous. So just, it's, it's all a scam. No, it's true. Oh, I just get very angry. Yeah, it is. If anybody got scammed, you're part of that $10 million. I got $18.5 million from publishers clearing where. Oh, you'll have it coming. You're going to win tomorrow? Okay. Well, that's good. Well, we'll expect one of those big donations. They called and told you it was coming. And yeah, they want your numbers. So don't give out any numbers. I just, I'm sorry to take up your time to discuss that. But the best way to know is to reach people at home, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your neighbors. Um, and, and these are very smart, intelligent people that have gotten, you know, they just catch off guard. And you think, oh my God, this is so important. So I'm, I'm going to stop talking about that now. <laughs> um, I do have Marlowe's social service report, so I can tell you where we are on that. 
Fortunately, it's been a rather mild winter, but to date they have processed and completed 488 applications. They have 130 more appointments scheduled, and we usually run between six to 800 families. I mean, if you incorporate the number of people per household, it's quite a few people that it affects. And each application, the state has come down and said it's about an hour and a half because now we have to go into the utility companies and code it a hardship and verify and document. So it does take some time, but fortunately we have that caseworker position who is seeing people from the time we open till the time we close. So um, thank you to our community for supporting that. Um, and Marla went to a meeting today that the governor is has proposed in his budget, and I looked through it a little bit. Um, a liquid asset test to be added to the Medicare savings programs that were at risk of being cut last year, and now they will probably put a liquid asset test on it, meaning you can own your home, but depending about how much assets you have, um, that may limit your ability to get the Medicare savings plan. It's just a proposal, but Marla will continue to follow it, and we will continue to advocate for the people that we represent and serve. Um, in the budget, um, most of the things regarding seniors were pretty well intact. Things like home care seem to be still intact, um, and the food program seem to be intact, but it's always subject to cuts. But right now, I don't think there's anything to really get up in arms about. If there is, we'll let people know. And occasionally, I do email out to our participants. Like I did the scam, I emailed out last week just because we got a, a note from the State Department on aging on it. And we'll continue to monitor that. And for any of you that are horse people, yes, they're going to tax horse pork and, and boats. I did see that too. So, um, But as it regards to seniors, we're on top of that. Um, that's all of my report. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm going to turn Nancy, it over you to go ahead? Nancy. Sure. Um, so we've had a few little fun fundraisers. So I just want to share very quickly. Um, in July, we did Christmas in July. Any crafts left over from the last fair, we everything was 50% off. So we made $253. And we recently had a bling bazaar, bangles, baubles, and beads. Four for a dollar. And I don't know who had more fun, the people buying the jewelry or the people selling the jewelry. So we made $55. And for the first time, we did a half price fashion show right before lunch. We had two different lunches going. Patty on our commission was one of my models. And we made $47. So it was fun. And in April, we're going to do um, a half price jewelry, some of the jewelry that we made. He had made with the sterling silver earrings and stuff. The, um, sea glass jewelry, some of it will be half price. So it's just fun, silly things, you know, to brighten up a dreary February day or whatever. So I just want to let you know that we do have some fun here and there. Um, next week we have a couple of important things I just wanted to share for programming. Um, I am showing a documentary on baseball and black history. That's on Monday at 10 o'clock. On Tuesday, um, through the health department, we're showing a DVD on uh, resilience. It has to do with um, stress and the science of hope. That's on Tuesday at 10.30. And thanks to the VNA um, Community Healthcare, we are offering the Exercise for Better Balance. It's a 12-week program, and what it does is it helps to build your upper body, your core, and your lower extremities so that you prevent falls. And Every single person who goes through the program improves. They, the first class, they do a blood pressure, they check your balance, the walking, and then two classes before you end, they do it again, and everyone improves. It's only $15. Um, I did try the class this past time. I did the last 10 minutes, and I was pleasantly surprised at what um, Lynn did with the people. I thought it was um, very good. It's from 1 to 2 in the afternoon. I still have a few spots open. Um, it's March 13th through May 28th, I think. Yeah. Um, so if you're interested, please give me a call on that. Dagmar mentioned the Aging Mastery Program. We're doing that as well. 
Um, I do have a couple of trips coming up in early March. I have a few tickets. Uh, we are going to UConn women's basketball game a week from Saturday, March 2nd. Not only is it senior day, but they are retiring Rebecca Lobo's number. So if you see me in the stands, I'll be crying. Is that sold out? <laughs> Um, I still have a few tickets left. Um, if you want to go buy tickets up at Gamble, uh, they only have single seats, and many of those tickets, there's a barrier you won't be able to see. But we have really good seats. And we're taking our mini bus. We're taking two mini buses. So yeah. anyone who's watching this, if you're interested, give me a bus tomorrow because I'm sure I'll be sold out. And then just one more um, mini trip on the mini bus. We're celebrating St. Patrick's Day, a little bit past St. Patrick's Day on March 19th. We're going to Aquaturf Club, and uh, there's a really great band. It's only $49. We're able to reduce the price. So if anyone wants to celebrate St. Patrick's Day, because you know I'm Nancy O'Cohen, so <laughs> come celebrate the holiday with me and uh, wear your green garb, and we'll all have a good time. So there you go. I'm done. Thank and you. I have one thing to add. Um, a couple weeks ago, many of you saw in the sound, Nancy was Person of the Week. And it was a very well-deserved recognition, and we're so right. grateful for what you do. And I'm very grateful that you got recognized publicly. And we got a lot of calls about that. And it was yeah. a great picture too. So oh, mm. thank you. Yeah, we got a lot of younger seniors that joined the center. So that was the only reason why I agreed to do and get my picture taken. Because I don't like to talk about me. I talk about you. But <laughs> <laughs> I wanted you. Them too. Uh, thank you. So, Okay. So the next thing on the agenda, we have a com we have comments, and again, thank you, Pat, yeah. for going to collect them. We have one from Marianne Veer, and I apologize. This was way back from September because we really we didn't have a meeting. So anyway, she <laughs> said, "Laugh out loud was wonderful." She said, "The scenery and performances were beautiful. Humor was great. That must have been fun coordinating. Amazing creative abilities and talent of Marge and David and crew. Outstanding. Thank you. Also, please share with Marge. Thank you. So I'll give that to you. you can share that. You with Marge. You want yeah. To explain. Also, um, you know, we do something called Readers Theater and." Sometimes I have a hard time finding things that are for adults. So a lot of times I just find like jokes. And what it, what Reader's Theater is, is for people who enjoy acting, but we're at an age where we don't want to memorize lines. So I don't know, I found some jokes and they were just acting them out. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, we could do something like the laughing show. So yeah, so Dave went and got the refrigerator boxes um, and each person decorated their own window and it was awesome. It's hysterical. Yeah. It, was it was really, really fun. It was really funny. They even got Dagmar and myself to do it. And then we are doing another show. I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you what it's called, but it'll be in May. So check the newsletter. You could come talk to me when I'm told I'm allowed to tell you what it is. But it was another thing where I found a bunch of jokes and then they just took off. And, um, you know, it's great to see the creativity of our members. And I'm not just talking the youngins. The oldest lady's 94 and she's pretty funny. So, you know, anyone, we're kind of set with our actors and actresses, but once the show's over in May, we're looking for more people to join us. So please do so. Excellent. All right, the next one we have is from Jean DeRiso. DeRiso? DeRiso. DeRiso, and this was back in November. So she requested that the coat racks on either side of the entrance are continually blocked. She did supply some pictures, leaving no place to hang coats. Um, the, re the three recyclable bins have been there since last spring and tables on the other side forever. So on many rainy days, dripping coats um, were everywhere except where they should be. And now winter is upon us. So again, we we did, and part of that was when we do our shredded event, the bins come in, and it's hard because they go in the yoga room and the the exercise room, and then they go back in the hall, and we have to move them around. So we apologize for anyone that was inconvenient. But now we only have two of those, but we have to keep those bins there because we're cleaning out. A building that we've been in for 40 something years yeah. and so we have to have that there so we can properly dispose of documents and things from the staff um, and we did clear out so there's room for the codes okay. we did address that okay thank you and the last one we have is from January um, it, there's no name it says thank you for having the chair Tai Chi class Alana was very good um, teaches us many things so thank you all for the comments 
So the next part. Of thank our you for the positive comments. Yeah, I appreciate it. Nice. And, and if anyone has a concern, mm -hmm. they can come talk to us. Absolutely. And we can try to resolve it. Um, our doors are usually open, and, and we'd like to resolve something before it becomes a complaint. And I'm really happy that people are putting positive notes in there about their experiences because there's a lot of good that goes on. No, that's Thank great. You. That's right. So the next part of our agenda is citizens' comments. So if anybody has a comment, we would invite you up to the table to speak into the microphone. So any comments from our citizens? No. Okay. okay. Well, thank you all for coming. <laughs> I guess then we will have our next meeting then will be May 9th. Can I have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Yes. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, right. everyone. And thank you all for coming. Thanks, everybody. This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BrantfordTV.org.